Do you know your personality profile type? Have you taken one of the many personality tests or analysis that are out there today? Well, in today's broadcast on Life as God Intended, we're going to discuss personality profiles and identity. You see, for decades, big corporations have used personality tests to evaluate employee candidates <clears throat> during their hiring process. There, there are many suggested benefits of personality tests, such as to better understand ourselves, identifying our likes and dislikes, knowing which situations are ideal for us, recognizing our strengths and weaknesses. However, in March-April issue in 2017 of the Harvard Business Review magazine, an article appeared that revealed that some academics are skeptical. The magazine states that personality testing was first used by the U.S. Army during World War I to try to predict which soldiers would, sh would suffer shell shock during the war. The article goes on to state that millions of workers take assessments each year as part of personnel selection to improve collaboration and teamwork and to identify satisfying career paths. The article continues, but personality screening is not without controversy. In recent lawsuits, courts have ruled that the use of certain tests discriminate against protected classes of workers, particularly those with disabilities. Research suggests that many beliefs held by HR professionals about personality screening run counter to scientific evidence. And the article continues that management scholars worry that fixating on personality as the primary source of conflict at work can cause managers to overlook the critical role that they play in creating the enabling conditions for teams to succeed, whatever their composition." End of quote. That's a fascinating article, and I think it points out some of what I'm going to share today. But before we get into that, it's also a fact that personality testing is expected to be a $6.5 billion industry by 2027. Wow. So, how should Christians view personality testing? And frankly, the bigger question of personality function or dysfunction for that matter. The, pre, the presupposition of all of these analyses is that personality traits constitute one's identity and that each person has inherent strengths or good points to their personality, necessitating that you accentuate your positive and that you eliminate your negatives, and live up to your self-potential. The focus of these personality profiles is squarely on you and the functionality of the soul, which consists of the mind, the emotion, and the will, your personality. They, the implied goal is that you become a better person or a better version of yourself. How, you ask? Well, according to them, by increasing the good 
and decreasing the bad character traits. Now, I'm going to suggest from a biblical Christian perspective that this is the very premise of Satan's temptation to Adam and Eve in the Garden of Evil. E Garden of Eden, I should say. It, was, it wasn't a gar Garden of Evil, but turned out that evil prevailed because of their choice. And this, the satanic uh, temptation was that they could be as gods, knowing good and evil for themselves. And of course, this is the big lie of humanism, that you're your own point of reference and you're doing your own thing. The humanistic premise of self-potential must be rejected. Understanding the big picture of personality has to be seen through the lens of God's design and not just psychological reasoning. The Apostle Paul explained in Romans chapter 7 and verse 18, he said, In me, that is, in my flesh, dwells no good thing. End of quote. You see, he was writing to Christians and explaining that in me, in us, that is in our soul, in our personality, there is no good thing produced. You see, all of the categories of personality analysis, and most of them have four different categories, but all of them, and regardless of which one you use, are but bundles of classification, bundles of fleshly patterns of selfishness. Whether you think those are positive or negative, if you're the source of those character expressions, those are selfishness. So, as a Christian, we must submit to the work of the Lord Jesus Christ within us to overcome these natural propensities by expressing Christ's life and character through our desires, through the soul, through the mind, through the emotion, through the will, through the personality, allowing Jesus to be in charge of our personality. The Christian's focus is not to be on one's personality, the soul, but rather the spirit. Man has three levels of life capacity, spirit, soul, and body. And as a Christian, a Christ one, you are in union with Christ. As Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 17, but he that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit. Your identity is determined by the spirit which indwells your spirit. Now, that can be an either-or spirit, either God or Satan. But once you become a Christian, it's obviously the Lord Jesus Christ because a spiritual exchange has taken place. Yet you still have the flesh pattern of sin in the desires of the soul. So you must, you must differentiate between what Christ is doing in spiritual union in contrast to your psychological evaluation, i.e. personality traits in the soul. For the Christian, spiritual identity is determined by Christ's indwelling presence, not in our personality dysfunctions. Thank God. And this is why Paul states in Philippians chapter 1 and verse 21, For to me, to live is Christ, and to die is gain. He didn't say it was about understanding his personality dysfunction. Our focus must be on Christ and participating in his character to experience life as God intended and not our personality analysis. So may I encourage you to press into Jesus and allow him to have full access through your personality to the glory of God. 
Thanks for subscribing to Life as God Intended, for giving me a thumbs up for the video, for leaving me your comments in the comment section below.